to my mom. America promised not having to alter all of her clothes because they came in only one standard Soviet size, usually extra large, dark gray, and industrial looking. America promised not having to carry her twin daughters up five flights of stairs because the elevator was broken, again, and the electrician was passed out drunk in the hallway. To my dad, America promised being able to run a small business without being extorted for bribes by government officials. America promised eating something other than potatoes and oatmeal. And it promised no more snow ever again. My sister Sonia and I thought America would be just like Disneyland. Well, it wasn't Disneyland, and I think it did snow once or twice, but America delivered on its promises. Within 10 years, my parents were homeowners, we had health insurance, and Sonia and I were headed off to college on academic scholarships. I'm not saying it was easy. My parents had to work full-time jobs, sometimes two jobs, and night shifts, but they weren't afraid of hard work. They raised me to believe that if you work hard and play by the rules, dreams can come true in America. I've spent the last 10 years trying to reconcile my America with what I experienced in New Orleans in 2005. When my friend Nani and I decided to spend our spring break helping with Hurricane Katrina relief efforts, I'm pretty sure we imagined ourselves doing something really heroic, like patching up someone's roof. Eight months after the hurricane, we figured there wasn't much left to do. But this was not just a natural disaster. We suited up in respirators and hazmat suits, duct taped them to our wrists and ankles for extra protection. For hours and hours, we tore down soggy, rotting walls that had been underwater for six weeks after the levee broke. It was so hot. Sweat rolled down my face and made it hard to see through the goggles. And I was so pissed. All around us, blocks of homes had been leveled by a barge that no one bothered to move before the storm. Insurance inspectors told us they would not cover any of this damage because it wasn't technically caused by a hurricane and it wasn't technically a flood. Politicians walked around collecting votes from abandoned homes and announcing that New Orleans was rebuilt. And meanwhile, a television reporter told us to let this place go because it would never be rebuilt, and no one would ever return. It made for awkward dinner table conversations for a long time. But as time goes on, I feel like we're reaching some consensus on a difficult conclusion. In America, the dreams of some are more important than others. <laughs> 